Hi, this is Brian Gracely, and in this video we're going to talk about PaaS, or Platform as a Service, P-A-A-S. Now, if we think back to what we talked about in a previous video, where we tried to relate uh, the various types of layers of computing with the sort of the layers of, of cloud computing, we got to this analogy where we sort of said you had, you had hardware, right, which relates to infrastructure, which is what we talked about, infrastructure as a service, okay? And then we had the operating system, the OS, which really relates to what we're gonna talk about now, which is PaaS, or Platform as a Service. And then on top of both of these, we have applications, right? In the case of a computer, computing device, server, uh, it's an application. In this other model, we tend to call that software as a service, or SaaS, okay? But we're primarily going to focus on this layer right here, platform as a service. So let's think about what the OS does in a pure basic compute environment and what a PaaS does or a platform as a service tries to do in order to allow this to work for cloud computing environments. Okay. So what, what it's really doing is a couple of different things. And just to throw out a couple of names so that you can put platform as a service into context, there are a lot of different companies and open source projects uh, and activities that are what people will call platform as a service today. So I'm just going to throw out a couple of names. This isn't an all-inclusive list, but this will help you when you're reading things in the news and the media and so forth. So um, some of the more popular platform as a service are more well-known. Google has one called Google App Engine, G-A-E. Microsoft has one called Azure or Azure. VMware has one called Cloud Foundry. Uh, Salesforce.com has something called Heroku. Uh, Red Hat has one called OpenShift. Um, what are some of the other ones? There's one called Cloud Bees. Uh, there are a whole bunch of Engine Yard makes one. A um, bunch of different um, platform as a service. And really the distinguishing characteristic is some of it's architectural, and we'll talk about what it means, the architecture of a platform as a service environment. Some of it has to do with whether they are closed environments or open source environments. Some of it has to do with whether they run in public clouds only or they will be supported in private clouds. Um, and then also the, the last characteristic tends to be which programming languages or which programming frameworks do they support. Some of them are specific to certain frameworks. So for example, uh, Microsoft.NET or Java or um, some of them support multiple languages. So they'll support Java and .NET and Scala and Perl and Ruby and, and others. And so developers will make their decisions based on you know, what works best for them. Do they write to a specific language or a framework? Are they looking for an environment that lets them support multiple languages and multiple frameworks? Are they looking for something that is public only, something that's open source? Lots of different variations in there. So but let's talk about the basic of what a platform as a service is really doing. Right? So again, we're going to keep coming back to these same sort of stack drawings, but we're going to have infrastructure, right? We're going to have infrastructure that delivers us servers, storage, network, and the underlying you know, security and other functional things. We're not really talking about this here, but it's there. It doesn't go away. And now with platform as a service, and I'll draw it a little bit bigger so we can include a number of things, within PaaS, we're going to be talking about you know, the way that it interacts with a number of things. The first thing is it's got to have ways to dynamically interact with the infrastructure. Be able to uh, request that virtual machine if, if we're dealing with a, uh, an environment that, that serves up virtual machines, or just bare metal servers and storage and the underlying network resources. So it's got to be able to talk to the infrastructure, and it's going to do that through uh, APIs. Okay, so one of the really important things as we start to move up the stack for cloud computing is more and more of this type of communication, you know, between the layers, between different devices, this type of communication is going to be done through what are called APIs or application programmer interfaces. This is in essence a programmable uh, way for one area of a stack, one layer of communication, one layer of an application to talk down to different devices in a way that doesn't have to involve individual people, individual humans. It's not a scripting language, but it's a set of programmatic uh, calls between computing devices that allow them to 
uh, to interact sort of natively. Okay, so the first thing a PaaS has to be able to do is deal with the infrastructure, just like an operating system has to be able to deal with CPU and memory and I/O. PaaS has to be able to deal with the underlying infrastructure. The next thing a PaaS has to be able to do is it has to be able to say, well, um, what's the what what's sort of the framework for the application? So up here somewhere, I've got applications that are going to reside in this stack. Okay. And those applications want to be able to speak or be developed and speak their native languages. So uh, .NET might be one of them, or Windows, Microsoft environments. Java is a very popular one. Ruby might be one. Uh, you know, Perl or Python might be one. Um, be Python. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different sort of frameworks. And again, these are programming languages and programming models um, that the PaaS has to be able to, to deal with. And again, these are sort of frameworks, and then to a certain extent, there's sort of this programmatic way that these are going to interact with each other, okay? And again, we're talking about a sort of a different uh, layer in the stack. We're talking about very programmatic types of things. We're talking sort of programmer language here as opposed to infrastructure language. We're not talking about networks and ports and disks and RAID. We're talking about programming languages and APIs and so forth. And then there's the things that the PaaS has to be able to do that's sort of its, its guts, its middleware, if you will, that being able to deal with how do I make sure that um, you know, multiple customers can carve off resources. So this might be customer A and customer B and customer C, but also that different environments can go and get resources. So a set of resources that are going to be uh, CPU resources or they're going to be um, certain types of processes that they can run for a period of time, development, application processes, they could run for a period of time and then stop them and start them and spin up more processes as needed depending on the load of the application. So uh, a web process, an Apache process, some other type of set of processes. So there's both a containerization function for a certain process or for a certain customer that has to happen within a PaaS environment. Uh, and then there's also this sort of process interaction between you know this process and that process to make sure that if this one behaves badly or this one behaves the way it's supposed to, that, that the errors and the fallback and the resetting and all those sort of things that have to happen for an application that an operating system would traditionally have done in a traditional computing environment, all those things can be done in my PaaS environment, right? So the, you know, the really important thing again as we talk about PaaS is there's, there's a bunch of characteristics that we're thinking about. First and foremost, we're probably talking about new applications. Most people aren't going to take a legacy application that was written 10 years ago and try and wedge it into a PaaS environment. We're really talking about new applications. We tend to talk about web scale applications, web uh, applications, things for mobile devices tend to be a really good candidate for PaaS. Anything that's probably going to be new, right? A uh, great um, candidate for a PaaS environment. The next thing we tend to look at for PaaS environments, so we're going to probably have new applications. That tends to be the starting point. I'm going to write to a new application. I'm going to figure out what, what sort of language or framework that I want to write to. So this is sort of the, the language of the developers. Okay, It's Java. It's Ruby. It's whatever it is. Okay, Scala, whatever the latest language that they want to write in. Okay, They want to know, is this open source? Or is this closed source? And there's benefits to both, right? Some application PaaS uh, frameworks are open source, things like Cloud Foundry. Um, others are more closed in what they do. But ultimately, they both have ways to have these APIs um, be able to access what happens within the PaaS. So in some cases, um, organizations want to strictly work with open source. Others are OK with, with more closed environments that have you know, more direct support models. But as long as they can get to the application framework the way they want to, they can manipulate it and change it the way they want to, that tends to be that next big critical environment, uh, big thing. The third thing is, can I run this in public or private environments? And some of these paths will run in only public. Others have been architected so that they can eventually run in private, if, even if they don't do it today. But the, really the big thing that people tend to look for when they look at PaaS platforms is, will I have portability between this cloud 
which might be public and runs with Amazon or Rackspace or GoGrid, and will I be able to move that someday, if need be, to another cloud or a third cloud or be able to run the application in all three clouds at the same time. So for geographic reasons, for cost reasons, for scalability reasons, they may want portability. So that's a really big deal. Um, and then the last thing that people tend to look at is so we've got, you know, is the application new? What's it for? Which language? Open source or closed source? Public or private? And the last thing tends to be, you know, are there other dependencies that I'm looking for with my pass? What kind of support do I get? Um, which, which uh, you know, what's the future direction? Are there dependencies with my infrastructure? Is it independent of my infrastructure? And different PaaS platforms are, are thinking about, you know, either hooks to uh, certain infrastructure or complete independence there. But ultimately, when we think about a PaaS platform, we're really thinking about a new way of writing applications. They tend to be web scale, distributed applications. They are going to build a lot of the uh, redundancy into the application themselves. They're not necessarily expecting it from the infrastructure. They're doing it for new types of devices, so applications for mobile tends to be a really uh, early adoption space for this, for what's going on. And, you know, the PaaS platforms are looking at how do they distinguish themselves, whether it's through uh, better architectures, more sophisticated architectures, more scalable architectures, whether it's through lots of frameworks and languages that developers can write to, whether they're open source or closed source, but ultimately PaaS becomes that new type of operating system, that new way that people are going to write applications going into the future for the next 5, 10, 15 years, and they're writing them in a way to sort of the, becomes the native language, the native operating system for cloud computing environments as opposed to the old sort of server-centric environments. So I hope this helps. Um, if you're a developer, this probably makes a little bit of sense. If you're an infrastructure person, it may not completely make sense because you tend to talk in infrastructure terms. But as we see more and more of cloud computing coming together, and we see people wanting to do more things with it on shared infrastructure, um, we're going to have to become familiar with the terminology and the language and some of the products that involve all the elements of, of cloud computing, platform as a service being one of them. So thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.